All right, so today's Thursday, August 8th, 2019. Update on the Bearhawk. Well, you can see we've got some things done here. A lot of improvements since the last time I made a video. Um, been gone for a while. This summer's been really slow. Uh, had a big business trip I had to go on in June, and we had a summer vacation, and then we had a, a week in Oshkosh. Um, and then we had issues with the engine isolators and the mounts and the ears on the engine case. So uh, lots of things slowing me down for the summer, but uh, still making progress. And there's some things here I'd like to share with you, kind of talk about uh, what those things are. So let's start back here. This is a panel that sits below the uh, threshold, uh, which is a raised threshold because we're gonna have a gull wing door on this, uh, on this bear hawk. Uh, that panel's all completed. Uh, everything's wired. I just have the panel off for, for simple access. Uh, that's really the only reason why it's not on there. Uh, the boot cow's done, bottom boot cow, uh, all the way up to the top. We've, we've arranged, uh, I made, I've designed the boot cow so that uh, a panel that sits up here at the top uh, that will allow access to the back of the panel as well as being able to, I can tilt this panel out. So that's really handy. Um, it's really handy for doing some maintenance and things like that when you need it. Uh, the boot cowl itself will, will actually, let me just back up here. The panel itself is gonna sit proud of the boot cowl by about a quarter of an inch. I've never been a fan of, of the boot cowls that have a lip that stick out over this. I know it could be a good sun visor, such something like that, but uh, it's also, you know, if you have, if you have a, a forward motion, something stops and you have to, your body's moving forward, that's the last thing I wanna see is that coming towards my, my eyes or my nose or whatever, is that, that lip sticking out. All right, so the engine's hung um, and here's the, the isolators, these are the Lord, and I'll tell you here in a little bit which ones these are. Uh, these are Lord isolators. Uh, this is the Dynafocal Type 2 uh, engine bracket, and this is the Type 2 ears um, for the engine. And we had a lot of problems with that on a previous video. I talked about that, um, but these are now installed properly. There's two ways the, 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 these 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 isolators or are oriented in two different directions based on top and bottom. Uh, you can see the bottom here has this little kind of a cushiony sort of look to it because all the compression is going this way. If you look at the top, it's up here at the top because the compression is going that way. Um, so those are done engines hung hopefully it never comes off again until it gets replaced and i hope that's not in my lifetime but who knows um and of course i talked about earlier i'm using the rv10 firewall forward kit and that includes a lot of things like this oil cooler and its mount that i that i've installed uh also includes this baffling kit and i'll tell you it's certainly nice to have those baffles pre-cut and uh, the RV10 firewall forward kit fits perfectly on that IO540, but don't let it fool you. There's still a ton of work that has to be done installing those baffles. There, there's a lot of cutting and sizing, and those things are on and off probably 10 times before you finally get it down right, down perfectly where it needs to be. So uh, that's probably a good week worth of work, getting those baffles in where they need to be. And then I'll still I'll have the rubber that's next that'll be coming in like this through here. They'll be riveted, pop riveted in, and so all the rubber will be in place. Yeah, the props hung, mounted, whatever you want to call it. This is the Hartzell Trailblazer 84-inch composite prop with a nickel leading edge, constant speed propeller. Um, I've got the uh, chrome um, spinner that goes with it. it looks really nice and the nose bowl this is kind of a trick to get this on here properly if you look I've got a 3 8 inch spacer which is made out of plywood um, and it's clamped in here and then the nose bowl I've I've put screw I don't see where I can see that oh up here at the top there's screws in there that I had to screw it in so that that top nose bowl 
is held in place and it took a little bit of measuring and some leveling to get that just right but uh, of course that nose bowl is going to be off and be, it'll be painted red when all that's ready um, here's my manifold line coming back in through the firewall I still need to get a fitting to fix that and just a look down the uh, starboard side of the aircraft so uh, that's where I'm at right now as far as the, the airplane like I said next thing's gonna be getting the rubber on the baffling and then starting to work on the cowling as well as finishing up the rest of that firewall forward kit from uh, vans um, that's where we're sitting I'm gonna go in the garage now and talk with you a little bit about some tools uh, oh one thing I wanted to mention you know some people have talked to me and I actually ran into some people at Oshkosh that recognized me from these videos that was cool um, I want to be really clear that these are not how-to videos that these videos I'm creating are really just you know I'm a, I'm a first-time home builder and these are my experiences I want to share with you some of the things I've encountered some of the problems some of the setbacks and that way hopefully somebody else will see this stuff and it'll help them with their project because there's been a few things and quite frankly I just did not know I would encounter um, a lot of the difficulties that I did I'm not complaining um, but I just just didn't even, just didn't even consider that this some of these these uh, obstacles would present themselves so it, it's it's been a real challenge and of course I never set out to, to, to do a, a, a you know YouTube channel but I started doing a couple of videos that I wanted to document for my 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 uh, builders log for the when the DAR comes out and does the, the inspection for the airworthiness certificate. I wanted him to see some of the things I encountered, and this just kind of you know it's kind of grown into what it is. I've got a couple hundred subscribers now, so I feel like you know it might be going somewhere. I don't know, but my real intent is at some point you know finish the build and show you guys what I'm doing with the build, as well as when we get into the first flight. And, and subsequent flights and uh, kind of show you uh, how that progresses and kind of take you with us on this building journey so everybody's asking me when am I gonna be done how long is it gonna take you know I, I when I bought the kit I thought I had enough time that I could do it in a year and now we're going on my 14th month maybe 15th month who knows it might be the first of uh, January uh, maybe maybe late fall I don't know it, it's just they it just keep running into things like the the baffles I, I didn't have any idea it would take a week to get those on you, you get the kit and you look like it looks like everything's there and ready for you to go but golly it's still a lot of cutting and fitting and drilling and things that you just really don't think about so so i'm gonna go in the garage next um show you some tools and some things that uh i think are kind of cool let's talk about some tools um these are just things that i've found uh, over time that, that I, I, some things I've liked and some things I didn't know I would need that I had to get um, but I think it's worth talking about because uh, you're probably gonna run into the same thing when you build your airplane you're gonna find out that you like one thing over the other so first thing I want to talk about are, are drills so this is my 10 year old Ryobi drill this is what I was using in the beginning I thought okay I can do this with this drill the problem is it's heavy and, it's, and you think it's convenient to be able to have to set it down somewhere and walk away. I, I've learned real quickly this is a problem because this thing, especially if it's got a drill bit in it and it falls over or it falls into something, especially like your fabric, you're not going to be happy. So it's just too big, it's too heavy, and it just it's, it's just unwieldy and it's a problem. So a lot of people said, and I've been reading a lot about air drills, how you want to use air drills when you're beginning to do your, your sheet metal work. Um, so I got a couple air drills and you know this is kind of the traditional handheld, this is kind of a right angle type of drill. I mean they work, there's nothing wrong with them, but you got a cord attached to it or, or, or a line attached to it and they're loud. Um, and so what I found was, I found, found this little drill that Bosch makes. And I know it's just a little 12 volt, uh, 12 volt, uh, I guess lithium ion. It's not an 18 volt, it's not a 20 volt, or whatever these bigger ones are. But I don't care. This thing is so lightweight and powerful. It's got a little light on the end, it tells me how my battery's doing, two speeds, 
uh, this is a hand chuck. It can be any easier. And when, I don't, when I'm not using it, I lay it down and it sits like this and it's not tempted to fall into something or roll over. There's no hose attached to the end. Um, so I think this was about a hundred bucks, but it was worth it because I, this is so, it's so nice. It starts off real slow. And I, can, I can get up to a piece of metal and speed up. It's got the variable speed, so that's really nice. Um, I've been using these um, little spring-loaded deals that you, you set with an Allen screw onto your bit. They come from different size drill bits, like this is the, uh, the 3 seconds, and there's one for the, the eighth inch. Um, so when you're drilling holes in the sheet metal, you're not bottoming out on your chuck against the metal and making that round motion on it. And these are just, they just make your hole and boom, it's just a little spring-loaded deal. There's no, there's no mark on the sheet metal, so that's cool. When I hung the prop, the Hartzell prop, I got, Hartzell sent me a manual. It's, it's a nice manual, it's a big, thick manual, and it's got everything you need in here about how to install your prop. Um, one of the things they talk about is you need a Hartzell tool number, da 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 and I went and looked to see what that was, and I come to find out this is a very special tool for tightening the, the uh, nuts. Well, actually, they're, they're bolts. They're, they're already preset into the hub. And if, you, if you've seen that, you'll know what I'm talking about. They don't come out. They're, they're, they come in, they're, they're installed in the hub from the factory. And you just got a little tiny window to get a wrench in there and do anything. And I learned real quick that these are three quarter inch nuts just a regular three quarter inch box in wrench, it just can, it slides off. It just constantly slides off. These actually flex. And same thing um, with crow's feet. You know, if you're using crow's feet, they, these things actually will flex on you. Uh, so there's a special wrench that, that you can either buy from Hartzell or um, Aero Splat, no. Anti-splat arrow makes a wrench, propeller wrench, specifically for props. And this thing's great. It's 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 uh, it, these openings do not flex. It, when it's on, it's on, and it tightens perfectly. They actually, have made this so that you can, when you're in the hub itself, you can just kind of like ratchet. You're not having to take it out do this it just slides back up so you're, you can go quickly and tighten all those bolts around that hub very quickly um, it has two openings here for your torque wrench so when you're ready to start torquing you've already got you've got an opening here it'll just slide right into there we go so ready to go um, it's a tool I didn't expect I'd have to buy and it's not cheap but you're going to need it because if you want your if you want your prop installed properly and you want your torque setting set properly, Hartzell Manual tells you you go around it once at 40 foot pounds and then you go around it again. I think it's 65 or 70 foot pounds. It's very precise as to how you need to mount that prop. And of course, mounting that prop correctly is extremely important. Uh, this is the uh, this is the air seal fabric that comes with the. Uh, firewall forward kit and this will probably be cut down the middle and this is what's going to be used on the baffles that I was referring to earlier so I just thought I'd show you what that looks like uh, one last thing I bought a helmet I know it sounds crazy and you see a lot of guys flying bear hawks and nobody's wearing a helmet but I'm six foot two I've already had my seat when, when the upholsterer made my seat put it in the airplane I sat down and I'm like this far away from that top tube over my head and so I've already had the seat cut down two inches I took it back to the upholster and he cut the he cut the foam down two inches on both sides that's helped it's brought me down a little bit but still I'm worried and, and I've confirmed this with another bear hawker who said that uh, he's been flying his plane and hit a really hard bump of turbulence and brought him up out of the seat he banged his head on the tube so that concerns me a little bit um, so I went ahead and I bought this helmet from Sky Cowboy.
what's great about this helmet is you can retrofit your, your Bose A20 headsets to this thing. And everything's all ready to go. All you gotta do is put your helmet on. And you're ready to fly. So, pretty cool. It's all there. Anyway, just wanna share that stuff with you. Sorry this video was so long. Thanks a lot, guys.